Okay, um, we're gonna move on with setting. Let's talk about what setting is. Uh, we have been working on passing to a target. The setter is the designated player on the team who is going to that target. She has other roles and responsibilities, so she can't just hang out right there and be like, hey guys, come set me. So we work on, again, movement to get them to get to the target. They, they know where the ball is supposed to be going. They're releasing to target, but first we need to understand that the setter is the one who delivers the ball to the hitter. So we pass to a target, the setter will meet the pass there. She will set a ball where the hitter is going, not where they are, and we will try to attack that third ball. So we're trying to calm what comes at us. We're trying to square up and send a ball to our hitter that we can now control the power that we put on it. So we're gonna start very basic, and we're gonna go through three ways that coaches can help players get the right body position. So you three girls stand on the red line facing him. Setting is an overhand pass. Uh, we want to shape the ball with our hands, and I'm gonna be honest, some people have good hands, and some people don't. And it's really hard to force a kid who has really tight hands to, to, to change that, so I wouldn't. When you're finding a setter, find someone who naturally moves quickly and has a soft touch. That soft touch is gonna be designated by sound. If you hear that ball real loud, uh, they, they're, they're not quite the right hands. We don't really wanna hear much of the set. It should be a light little, like, hollow sound. Okay, so there's three ways to get your kids in position. The first one I call 90-90-90. You explain to them what 90 degrees are, a 90 degree angle. Can you find a 90 degree angle on the floor? Okay, Mackenzie found one. Okay, okay, that's not 90. Well, I guess technically right there it is. Okay, so we know how to get to a 90 degree bend. I want you to bend your elbows at the same time. Put them by your side. Bend them 90 degrees, okay? Then I want you to bend the shoulder at 90 degrees. And now I want you to build, stay there. I want you to bend the thumb to the forearm at 90 degrees. So coach, if you'll look around and check them. So from behind you can see 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Are you looking at your own hands? All right, now I want you to look at your hands. And do they look like, if your thumbs are back in that 90 degree bend, your thumbs and, what finger is that? The index finger are behind the ball, if you want to get a ball and come put it in my hand. And the other three or six total are on the side. So it's behind, these two are behind, and these three are on the side. Also notice that there's a space between my palms, just like when you shoot a basketball, it's the same hand movement. So this is basketball, this is volleyball. I'm not palming it, and I don't do this. You see people on TV doing this or whatever. So my thumbs are back, there's a space. And I'm going to check them now and how we check them, if you want to grab a ball, is we slowly put that ball in their palms. And this opening is kind of like a triangle. It should be coming back at them and it should be at their forehead. Okay, so how do we do? We did good. We got, this is our non-setter, which is fine. She struggles a little with that wrist bend. She's a little tight. Um, but we still work and we still want to train her because we always need to be able to have that skill. These two girls actually are setters. So, all right, now I'm going to take the ball out of their hand. I'm going to fix the bottom by reminding them. Okay, so give me 90, 90, 90. And put your body like you're passing. And check like you're passing. Like we sat in the bleachers. Who can get it first? Ah, ah yes, yes. Tilt forward. Remember, we sat in the bleacher and we pulled you forward. That's what we do, but we go 90, 90, 90. So now everything we taught as passing is exactly the same, except when we set, we will follow through straight. So we will take everything bent and straighten it all at the same time. So I have 90, 90, 90, that's three bends. 90, 90, 90, three bends. So I got three on the top, three on the bottom, and everything straightens at once. So set, even the ankle toe. So KK, show them again, that was perfect. She's 90, 90 on the top, She's bent on the bottom, she extends even to the toes. That's what we're looking for. So, let's, let's review. 90, 90, 90. Passing form on the bottom. I'm checking their back ends to make sure they have that tilt. If they don't, I kind of tug on them and say, don't, don't, don't take a step. Madison, you have a trail leg, can you fix it? 
like your past, think about being a passer. There you go. All right, relax. The other um, way that you can help kids remember, and I use all three, I interchangeably do it depending on if I can tell if they connected, is um, drawing their, um, putting their hands on their hips. I say, come on, I know like you're talking to your friends and you just put your hands on your hips. Come on, put them on your hips. And they're not like this, you know, if you see them like this, be like, relax, you know. You want to make sure that they're bent right here. I was going to guess this one doesn't have as much bend. She just has tight wrists. It's not natural for her to bend. You can tell a good setter they have like a natural bend. So it's a little harder for her and that's okay. She's a defensive specialist anyway. Um, she's got a real good flex and so does she. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hands and I'm going to put my feet in that passing position that I'm thinking about with my bottom back. I'm ready to pass and I'm going to draw straight up. Sometimes you'll see them do this and you have to remind them literally straight up. So then I check them again. That's a way to do it. So you want to show them one more time. I'm relaxed. I put my hands on my hips. Then I get my feet in that passing form and draw my hands straight up. Okay, very good, all three of you. All right, relax. The other one helps a lot of the little ones. And you can actually, I should have brought some, but you, should, you can actually get the two liter bottles of Coke or Mountain Dew or whatever. And you put it out in front of them and you tell them to put their hands around it and it's empty and you ask them to put it as if they were going to drink it and the actual nozzle has to come toward the mouth and that helps with this part that they really struggle with so if you can imagine I have a two liter bottle and I literally do this if I want that nozzle in my mouth I can't have it like this right so when you give them a visual cue and an actual tactile object that sometimes helps them with that too so sometimes at the middle of the game I'll be like your two liter bottle and they're like guzzle it go 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 and they'll get those hands up so that is the hand technique the foot technique is exactly the same as passing we are going to square up to a setting target. So first as passers, we had a passing target, now we have a setting target. All right, I have each of my players laying on their back. I'm going to reinforce the hand work that we just taught them on setting. So they're gonna lay down, um, and you can do the same time as me. Um, this is a real good drill to do with partners. You really have to talk to them about what you need from the partner that's acting as the coach, but it's um, not as hard as some of the tossing drills. So I'm going to pretend I'm talking to some players, so it may sound a little like young. I'm not treating him young. I'm just, if I had a girl helping KK, I might talk like this. So my job right now is to help Mackenzie with her setting hands. So she's going to put up her 90, 90, 90, okay? And she's going to make sure she keeps her eye on the ball the whole time. I am. It, how well I do depends on how much she gets to practice and how much she learns. So I need to do a really good job. Plus she's my partner, we're gonna switch. So I need to do a good job for her, she needs to do a good job for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, I'm gonna make sure her hands are on her face. I'm not concerned with forehead and all that. It's not about that right now, it's about hands and how the ball feels. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at her and I'm gonna gently not place, but baby drop the ball in her hands. And she's not gonna do anything with it. She's gonna freeze and she's gonna look at herself and kind of assess herself. And I'm gonna help looking as, as a player, I might have some helpful information. Like if Mackenzie's hands were like this on the ball, I might say, oh, you know, coach said there's supposed to be a space right there. And so Mackenzie's gonna take her time getting her hands the way she thinks they should be. She should have these two fingers under the ball. Mackenzie, are these fingers under the ball? Yep, and these six are on the side. And all she's gonna do is lower it down to your forehead or nose. And she's gonna push straight. Now the tendency is gonna be to push to me. So as catcher, watch out. The goal is to push the ball straight up so that it would land back on you. But I'm not gonna let it land on her, I'm gonna catch it. So don't push it to me, push it straight up as if you were gonna catch it. And what I wanna see from her hands is a perfectly straight follow through where the back of her palms look like this. Not this, and I don't want this. So we're encouraging them to hold their hands until we can check them. And we shouldn't see this, we should see this, okay? So she's gonna push, and I'm gonna catch, and I'm gonna check, and I'm not gonna let it fall back on her, so I'm gonna catch before I check to make sure she doesn't get hit in the nose. She's got her hands up in the air, and I'm looking at her follow through and so we're gonna do it again. Lower, 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 drop. When you're fixed, you feel good, extend, check them. Cause look, I saw this. Yeah. Did you see that? Okay, so let's work for that. Let's try again. Hands on the drop, a little drop, 
push straight up, do that, follow through good, good, excellent, let's do it again a couple more times. Now, now that she's doing a little, I would do this a few times so they feel comfortable, let them switch. Then they switch back, so let's pretend I got to go. Now round two is, she's actually gonna set it. So we're gonna do the same thing, except she's not gonna self check and she's gonna hold her follow through. I need to make sure that I'm not giving her a push ball or throwing it, that I'm literally just dropping and I always say, are you ready? So it doesn't hit her in the nose. All right, check your, freeze your follow through and check it. Cause I saw this, okay? Right here, feel it, look at it, Superman, you're flying through the roof. Okay, hands go down. And also I wanted to say, I wanna back away cause sometimes it'll come at me real fast. So I extend my arms, drop the ball, push. Oh shoot, I didn't catch it in time, but she was paying attention. You can get started with them. We're gonna do it a few times. I'm gonna let it drop. She's gonna push and catch. That was beautiful. Hold the follow through, don't pop the arms back. Just like basketball, those coaches are constantly saying, hold your follow through. It's because of control. When that ball comes off your fingertips and you follow through, you have touched it longer, literally. In volleyball, we're trying to put it in a specific spot that we have designated, and if I pop my arms back like this, I don't have the same control as pushing through and holding. So that's what we're talking about when we say hold your follow through. All right, so they're gonna do that a few times, switch with their partner. This is a way you can get a big group. You can be scanning and saying, oh, you know, give her a better ball, help her out, or you know, you just kind of walk the room and scan. I'm gonna give her a couple more. She's gonna hold her follow through. Good, and I would have caught, but she pushed it the wrong way. Sometimes the balls will go everywhere and that's okay. Um, if I notice that a kid is not delivering the partner ball they need, I, I try to help them by saying, hey, can you give her a ball right here? And if they just can't, I'll sometimes say, hey, let me see the ball a second and I'll do a few to make sure that kid gets a good rep. All right, everybody good with that? How did they do, coach? All right, y'all can get up now. That's just a way for them to push through the ball, have a partner, have some accountability. I think that they learn when they see it in others. Like I felt, you know, like I had um, some information that would help McKenzie as my friend. And then as I'm teaching her and noticing things in her, it's helping me recognize things in myself. All right, so we're gonna shift now to actually setting from the target that the passers have delivered the ball. So I'm gonna remove this target so that nobody gets hurt. Sometimes we will use floor dots, um, but they don't need them at this point, although this isn't an actual court set up the way a game would be, so it is a little confusing for them. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna have setting targets. <clears throat> All right, as we said before, there's basically three hitters. Technically, there's five because anyone can hit, but on the front row, there's three people. And it doesn't matter what system you wanna call, but I recommend even at an early age, deciding what you wanna call each set and teaching them so that they start to communicate efficiently. If McKenzie is at the setting spot, <coughs> this is what I use. This is not what you have to use. This is not what everyone uses. I think this is simple and my kids have thrived on it, so I've stuck with it. I use a number system in front of my setter and a letter system behind. So I have a little diagram and I can send a copy um, and it shows the path of the set and shows what it's called. So the most basic three sets are gonna be high to your left front hitter, somewhat high, not really that high, to your middle hitter, <clears throat> and then high to your back hitter, your right side hitter. So they are arches, like rainbows, like arches, that go up and peak and fall. That's your baby basic set, and there are dozens of different between the more advanced the game gets, but this is where we wanna start. We use a numbering system in the front. So a, in reference to the setter, where she's standing, this, remember this used to be our passing target, this is where our passers pass. The one is a nice easy ball right in front of her and it's not high. The two goes a little farther. That's the one we're gonna do today. It's kind of like this, okay? The three lands between the two and the four is out here and the five is super high. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Behind her, we have A, B, and C. 
same concept. The A is the little one that's close to her, B is a little farther, C is high back. So the basic sets are what? The basic three sets are four or five, <clears throat> two, two, and C. So we're gonna work on four, two, C, and once they learn that and understand it, when they're over here wanting to get set, Instead of saying, I'm ready, I'm ready, where a setter is looking at the ball and she doesn't know who's saying ready, but she hears four, four, five, five. She knows, oh, the girl that's gonna hit that ball is ready. So I encourage teaching it as early as five years old. So <clears throat> let's have someone be the catching target, someone handing for me and shagging. And you can bring in the volley lights, I'm sure, Mackenzie. Would you be okay setting volley lights? You think it'll throw you off? This drill can be done in a variety of ways. Um, I believe in repetition. So when you do groups that are too big, they'll set a ball, wait, 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 wait for a while. So I'll do small groups or I'll do one kid. It depends on how big your group is. Once you figure out who your setters are, you definitely want to make sure you're setting up some type of place for them to practice these things alone so they can get the repetitions they need. Because they are like the quarterback on the football team. They're receiving the ball and they're making a decision on the offensive play. So, Mackenzie, let's have KK go to the two. I put a um, hula hoop on my two. At our gym, we have this big net and I put a ball card under it and it really helps them get up over that lip. Um, this is how we're gonna do it. So I'm gonna toss to Mackenzie, one of you will hand to me and we're gonna just work with one kid. But I could have, go run behind her, a line. Run, 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 KK go behind Madison. Mackenzie, I mean, number six and number one would be off the court, and number 10 is on the target. This is how you could do it if you had a group. She could set, pretend to set, and then run out of the drill. The next kid runs up. This is also a circle drill. It's a setting circle drill. And then the next one would come up and set, and you would just do the whole group over and over again, and then switch your groups. But we're gonna do one person at a time just to teach you how to do it. And KK, number one, is standing on the number two target. Here is the catch. Earlier I talked about how we don't set hitters, we set imaginary places in the air, places we have to trust and we have to deliver to something we cannot see. I call that an air target for my kids. Mackenzie's air target is gonna be different than mine because our sizes are different. So it's not even something I can say it's like this. She has to work on it, deliver it. She has to learn what her arm follow through is. Is her arm lower, is her arm higher? So you just have to spend a lot of time with them. But Mackenzie, I want to remind you that you're not setting KK. KK is truly this person right here, okay? She is about to make what we call an approach toward a ball. So these two girls have a trust going on. The passer also has a relationship trust with my setter because my setter is back here. And she's releasing to a target. Remember I said that she's not gonna be there necessarily when the passer actually passes it. So they have a relationship and these two have a relationship. They all have a relationship with one another. It's a great sport for understanding I can't play it alone. I can't pass that in hit, it's not legal, it's not possible. I need my team. So what we do is we teach them young that they have to trust <clears throat> the plan. They have to trust what they can't see. They have to trust what they can't do yet and trust that they're gonna learn it and they're gonna get it and to cut corners is not gonna make them more ready, okay? KK is a hitter and she, she can't just, she's not 6'5", so she's not gonna just stand and like pop the top of the ball and like beat everybody. She's gonna need some speed and momentum and some jump. So just like a layup for basketball or any sport, I'm gonna have an approach and I'm gonna vertically challenge and jump myself as high as I can and that takes time. Mackenzie's coming from the back row to a target that she is trusting her passer to get her the ball. And Mackenzie's job right now is not to focus on the hitter, but where the hitter is going, right? So this is not easy, okay? And we don't get to catch and hold the ball the whole time we're doing this. We can't even hold it. So Mackenzie's job is to make sure that she always squares up to where the ball is going. Number one common mistake for young setters, even high school setters do it a lot, is because the pass is coming from like Madison in the back row, I turn to her 
We talked about that with passing. We don't want to turn to where it's coming from. We want to turn where we're sending it. Unlike passing, the setter has to have the right foot forward. Mackenzie happens to be a lefty. This was more challenging for her to not do this. We had to get her to a right foot forward. Um, it's really important because if they have this leg forward, they tend to overset and put a ball too tight. So we want to square up as setters to where we're sending the ball, not to our hitter. So this is the common mistake. I turn this way and I hear KK saying, two, 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 and I go, here KK. And then where do I send that ball? To KK. But where is KK going? Okay, so then I set a ball back here that KK is here on. <clears throat> so we have to talk about trusting one another, not cutting corners, and this is a big one too. Um, we don't want to do it's easy just to score. We don't want to be the setter and not trust that my hitters are going to hit it right anyway. So I just send it over because I see a hole right there. In early volleyball, you will often score a point with that. That's fine, but we don't want to teach them to not trust one another, to, to cut corners in order to get a point because that point was for their personal glory. They're not trusting the, the plan here and trusting one another. So we will make a lot of mistakes and we will lose a lot of points trying to do it right, but in the long run, we've established a discipline and a, a fundamental way of playing that as my body grows into that ability, I don't have to change anything later. I'm already on path. So, Mackenzie is gonna have KK. This is why I sometimes don't, I don't like to put people here. I like to put a bucket. I would normally put a ball cart or a garbage can um, right there instead of a person. Because when I put KK there, I've now told her she's setting KK and she's not. She's setting a target to where KK will be. Okay, so let's just do that. Let's have you stand right here. I want y'all to recognize that this is where Mackenzie's trying to set to, but I don't want KK to get hurt. <clears throat> Again, I would do this as, um, I would do this with a bucket. We have a net to where they're going into a bucket. And we want to get that right height. All right, so if you, we measured, roughly measured this earlier, this last notch, this gold like rivet right there is about where the top of the net is. So that blue line is, you know, like a palms higher than a high school net. And um, so that kind of gives you a visual on the height of her set. So I am gonna be the passer as the coach, but I'm just gonna toss her a ball. KK, um, just stay where you are and don't make an approach. And after she sets, just grab the ball and roll it back to us. So KK is our visual hitter for the two, and Mackenzie is gonna set a pl imaginary place in the air. That air target is the last place that the ball rises before it falls. And that is the follow through she needs. So wherever her hands follow through and whatever power she put on it and what ang whatever angle, which all this takes time, but basically where her hands finish, the ball will peak and fall that's her target, okay? So if Mackenzie is only setting this far, her peak target is somewhere up there. And sometimes as a coach, I can say, okay, it's gonna be more like right here. Now, the farther away Mackenzie has to push the ball, she'll get into setting position, drop her bottom back, and she'll follow through lower. But right now the ball's close to her. So her follow through is gonna be a little closer to her. All right, so she is setting a spot in the air, but it's going to land on that, uh, that the pole, the hole, the hole pole, the pole hole. Ready? That's actually perfect. Is she square up to the right place? See how she is setting forward? And then we have this visual cue. KK could even say two, two, and good. Okay, so that one got a little wobbly because you know why? Your hips came in. Remember, we still have a passing position. We don't want to be perfectly vertical. Good, that's beautiful. Gorgeous. So uh, her follow through is straight. She's not quite finishing. She's here instead of here. But they, these are really good. Good. I want to notice, Freeze, her hips are still facing me a little. So I want to remind her that it, she, sometimes like, she'll not quite square up on the bottom, but she'll turn her top. And it's, it's, it's a, still a good set, but um, it's not as straight. And the more advanced they get, the more that's going to cause a problem for her. But right now, that's a nice to so square up right the hip. Good. See how square she is? All right. So now, if she was doing a four, her hitter would be 
over there. Now her hitter is coming from a deeper, farther place and she's making an approach toward that hula hoop. You can leave it if you're not gonna get hurt. Okay, and um, now her air target, if you can imagine the area in the air that it would peak and fall and land in that. So she has to work on that to figure out where is my air target so that it lands right there, all right? And I think this is pretty close to realistic in court if I'm looking. All right, so she's gonna move her feet, square up, push. Okay, so can you tell me anything that you need to adjust having just done that? Okay, she needs to square up. And you know what you do better when you jump into your target? Okay, I call that an air pivot. So if she has to come, I'm giving her perfect passes, I'm tossing, but when she has to come set a ball over here, she's gonna have to wrap around the ball and square up to her air target because if she just comes to the ball, she's gonna put it too far off the net. So what I teach is an air pivot where they kinda jump into it. Um, it's a little faster because sometimes they leave a leg back if you don't um, jump. So I'm giving you good passes. Make sure you're, you're doing left, right at least, where you go left, right as you drop your body. Left, right, do you know what I mean by left foot, right foot? So run the ball down, left, right, set. Do you wanna try that? Okay. Left, right, good. Save it to the end. That was much better left, right. I was, I'm not worried about where it's going. I'm looking at the bottom right now. So make sure your bottom is back because you're getting too close to the ball. You'll notice that kids that can't push the ball out, they don't have the power. It's because they're so close to the ball and their head goes up and they bring their bottom in. And so then it's like a whip trying to get the ball out. The ball is supposed to be something in front of them that they go towards. So when they set a ball this far, if they get their bottom back and the ball behind them, when they extend, they can push forward. So when you see a kid struggling to push the ball forward, it's probably because their hips came in and they're really close. I want the ball in front of you. So back up if you need to. Good, square up first, square up first. Let's go real fast. So I might do this drill with like six kids. She sets a ball and gets out, but she's gonna just repeat it, repeat it, good. Good. All right, good, good job. Um, that's really it on the setting because a back set is totally different and it changes, you know, it's more advanced. We'll do that one later.